Hey, what's up guys? So just wanted to make a quick video here introducing a new series of videos on EMC design or electromagnetic compatibility design. And really what this is, is taking your circuit to the next level and making it more real world ready. Okay, so, so what I'm talking about is, you know, you don't want your board to interfere with other products or like, you know, make the TV go crazy. Uh, just like you don't want if somebody's walking by with, uh, with their cell phone, you don't want that to throw your board into reset. Or if you're running long cable, uh, cable runs and you've got some I.O., some inputs or push buttons, uh, should those cables be uh, shielded, twisted pair? What kind of input and output protection do you need on your board? What if they're ran alongside you know, higher voltage wires? So, I mean, this could go on forever. Um, and that's why I wanted to break it up into separate videos. And hopefully I'll be able to show you examples of each of these things here on the bench. And uh, I was actually inspired to make this video uh, based on one of my own designs that I forgot to uh, design in some EMC uh, protection. So um, I'll, let me show you what I've got here. Okay, so what we've got here is a little timer board that um, I repurposed from another project. And uh, basically it's a little uh, uh, Arduino compatible circuit down here with a seven segment display here. And uh, it's used for a uh, circuits training kind of timer so that when you push the button here, it gives you a beep every minute. And um, anyway, the funny thing about this is that, you know, it was a quick project, so I didn't put a lot of time into the design really, and just kind of threw a push button there. And when you push this button, it wakes it up from a deep sleep and then runs the timer. And then when you push it again, it goes back into that deep sleep. So this button here just triggers an interrupt on the AT Mega 328P. And uh, you can even see some of the design flaws. Like if I just tap this button here, you can see the display didn't turn on, but it beeped. And that's because I have no debouncing whatsoever, uh, either in software or the hardware. So when you push this button like that, let me see if I can do that again. When you just tap the button like that, it's actually triggering the interrupt to beep it. But then since it's a mechanical push button, it's gonna be bouncing there and it's gonna be ringing. So the same interrupt is called again to put it back into a deep sleep state. So that's kind of funny, but the scary thing about this is that you know I have this upstairs near the bedroom and uh, one night I noticed it was it just beeped like all on its own I heard that little beep and uh, hold on a second there we go okay so I heard that little beep and it scared the crap out of me and it turned out that um, I think well I'm actually not sure exactly but it happened a few more times actually just randomly but it could have been maybe some conducted uh, emissions getting onto this uh, onto the, the power cord for the board through that cheap 5 volt uh, wall adapter and then uh, somehow triggering that interrupt. So, so maybe some noise getting on that line. There's a few things we could try out, but the problem with the EMC design is that it's very difficult to replicate, right? So let there, that issue and we want to trigger that same noise somehow. So what I've got here just for this video is a really good source of noise, and that is the Jacob's Ladder up here. So this is the 10,000 volt Jacob's Ladder, and when I click kick this on, you heard that as soon as I kicked that on, the timer board beeped here. So there was some noise getting coupled onto this power cord feeding the board, and they are plugged into the same outlet strip, so and it's funny because I also have uh, a little uh, a little external hard drive there that beeps when uh, it loses its power, and that also beeps, so that's not good. But anyway, let's take a closer look and see if we can uh, if we can look at the the signal going to the microcontroller as soon as we kick on that Jacob's ladder and see if we can see the noise, and then maybe we can uh, implement a few things to eliminate that. Okay, so now we've got the scope fired up. Uh, let's go ahead and hook this up real quick and see if we can uh, see what's going on here. So I'm going to ground the scope. Now the other thing that, that's, that's going to be tricky is that by me attaching the scope here, I'm actually giving it a different ground reference. So this circuit may actually be now grounding itself through the scope and that could affect what we see here. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and look at it. This is a, uh, this is a rising edge interrupt 
and I've got a 10k pull down that's it there's no filter caps or anything just a 10k pull down running to this push button so let's uh, let's get the scope going here and I'm gonna take a look at this signal arm the scope let's make sure I've got the, everything here rising edge uh, single sweep channel one okay we're good and I'm gonna go ahead and hit the Jacobs ladder here okay it definitely beeped there and you can see we've got some noise there oh man okay it's a lot of noise as soon as I hit that I'm gonna try it again okay so that was that was really good so now we can see that let me get a closer zoom in on that okay so now we can see that we're almost getting a half of a volt there spike let's try this again okay look at that so we're getting a lot of noise on that line so that is definitely enough noise to trigger that interrupt let's try it again okay. yeah look at that it's amazing so let's try let's try putting hmm we could try a couple of things but I, I wish we could make more changes to the board but um, one thing I'd like to try is to put a big fer clamp on ferrite on this power cable and see what happens there I'd also like to get a capacitor um, across that 10k pull down maybe like a 0.1 microfarad um, the thing about this is that I'm not too concerned about the speed so it's not like this this button there we go it's kind of annoying there we go. So I'm not too concerned about how fast it responds to the push button. So I could slow that way down. Um, you know, I'd like to put a series resistor in line with this push button into the board, um, and then a cap to ground, and then the 10K pull down. I think that would be much better. Um, I could also put in some um, transient voltage suppressors. I could do quite a lot there. I could also put in some clamping diodes. If, I, if these were longer longer wires, then I'd be a little bit more concerned about that. But um, yeah, so there's a lot we can do here. So let me try to just, I'm going to kludge in a cap and, and let's see what happens then. Okay, so I modified the circuit so that now I have a 0.1 microfarad capacitor right across the pull down 10K resistor for the push button here that feeds that uh, digital input uh, to trigger the interrupt. Um, I also put a 100 ohm resistor in series with the push button into the board and it's a little through hole uh, resistor there so uh, that will add a, a little bit of an RC time constant so that you know now it's not as fast but you know for this application that's totally fine and you can see it works great so um, okay, so anyway, I, I also have the scope hooked up here, and I, I found a little clamp-on ferrite here as well. So now we've got the ferrite, we've got the filter cap, we've got some series resistance there, and uh, we can test this out. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the, uh, the Jacobs ladder here. Okay, so we'll just let that run for a little bit, and uh, you can see that we're not we're no longer getting the beep, so that the interrupt is not getting triggered. So we've uh, definitely suppressed that noise. Um, on the scope here, you can see that every time it hits the top, the arc hits the top of the Jacob's ladder, we get a little we get a little uh, flash of noise there and it's not too bad it's not nearly as as bad as it was before um, we could probably do even better and I'm actually not sure how real this noise is because I do have this huge ground lead on here so there's uh, some inductance there It would be nice to really get in there close um, and measure that that point right to ground at that point you know because I do have a ground uh, plane on this board so so based on this, I'm actually pretty happy with it. And I haven't heard it beat once while this has been running. So I think we've fixed the problem there. Um, yeah, everything's good. And the, um, yeah, and the board works just fine. So uh, anyhow, 
you know, this was just a quick video kind of showing you what uh, an EMC problem looks like. And, uh, you know, and this was just a quick, uh, easy fix to that problem. But uh, these problems can be pretty challenging to fix, especially when you have no idea what's going on at all or, it's in, or when it's really hard to replicate the issue. Like, you know, you need this, this data needs to be transmitting while that data needs to be receiving. And, you know, it's just like a perfect storm of things going wrong to cause that issue. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a funny thing because I see designs all the time that have no input protection whatsoever on any of the I.O. lines. And uh, especially in automotive applications, that's usually when people just think, you know, oh, it's just 12 volts, you know, no big deal. It's a battery, so it's not going to be noisy or anything like that. Uh, well, automotive uh, applications can be pretty harsh environments when it comes to uh, the quality of the, uh, of the power supply. So anyway, uh, just a quick video here, and hopefully I'll be able to show you some other examples of uh, EMC issues, and we'll try to figure out ways to, to fix those things. So anyway, just a quick video here. Uh, thanks for watching.